Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Yasudian, one of the dermatologists based in the UK. Today I thought I'd look at a specific finding in our hands, which is called hyperlinear palms. I use this clinical feature when I examine those who present to me with a skin rash. Let's look at its significance in inflammatory skin conditions. Most children have smooth palm oil skin, but increased skin markings is found in about 75% of children who have atopic eczema and the majority show a cross-shaped crease pattern. There are several other patterns as well and deep creases can also be seen in the palms and the fingers. It is important to note that similar changes can occur in the soles as well, particularly in children. What we're looking for is not the three major creases of the palms that all of us have, which are the thinner, proximal and distal transverse creases, but more of the subtle secondary creases that are distinct from these main creases. This image illustrates the variability of creases in the palms. It can be smooth as seen on the left with increasing hyperlinearity towards the right. The rightmost picture shows a child who had atopic eczema. The hyperlinearity reflects abnormalities in keratinization and can be defined as more than five prominent lines longer than a centimeter across the palm, particularly in the area of thinner areas. In adults, the expression of palmar markings can be influenced by environmental factors, for example, manual work. Age, chemical and thermal factors may also play a role and there may be differences in skin markings between the right and the left side. The first publication linking hyperlinear palms and atopic eczema was in the 1980s, in which the authors showed a positive relationship between increased skin markings in the palms and atopy. More recently, there have been studies looking at hyperlinear palms and its association with food allergies. In a study in the pediatric dermatology a couple of years ago, children were divided according to the presence or absence of palmar hyperlinearity. The egg white specific IgE was significantly higher in the hyperlinearity group. The authors suggested that palmar hyperlinearity indicated a possible inherited barrier abnormality of the skin in early childhood. Its identification may help to predict a more accurate prognosis, such as sensitization to certain foods. In another study published last year, an association between hyperlinear palms and peanut allergy in children with atopic dermatitis was observed. This association was seen regardless of atopic dermatitis severity. So how can we link the increased palma markings, ATP and food allergies? For this, we need to know about a protein called filaggrin. It's an epidermal protein involved in hydration of the skin and is essential for the formation of normal, intact and protective skin barrier. Loss of function filaggrin mutations have been considered a strong factor for allergic diathesis, and about 30 such mutations have been identified so far. This impaired epidermal barrier function is a crucial factor in allergic sensitization. In a New England Journal of Medicine review published a few years ago, the authors clearly explained the relationship between filaggrin deficiency and the atopic march. In healthy skin, due to an intact barrier, allergens are not able to penetrate into the skin. In filaggrin deficiency, the skin is more permeable and allergens penetrate the skin, which predisposes to an inflammatory reaction. This in turn increases the risk of atopic eczema, peanut allergy and asthma. So the way we think about eczema has changed. Initially, we thought it was due to an overactive immune system. But now we know that the skin barrier plays a much more important role and the immune changes are secondary to it. So what did I learn from this review? Firstly, looking at the palms for hyperlinearity is a simple way of assessing for atopic eczema and atopic traits. Its presence suggests sensitive skin. Secondly, in younger patients, it may affect the soles as well. Next, food allergies tend to be more common in those with hyperlinear palms, and so we may need to specifically inquire about this in the history. Finally, preventative strategies for eczema should begin by maintaining the integrity of the skin barrier, the simplest of which is using moisturizers regularly. I hope you found this information helpful. Thanks for watching and bye.